Thank you. As you heard, my name is Akachi Ezebo from Oga in Agwata local government area of Anambra State. Today I'm looking at three institutions that held sway, and one of them is still practiced in Igbo land and everywhere you find Igbo people today. We've had people say Igbo women were marginalized, they had no powers, and the society, uh, Petraki, treated them badly. But one thing we note about even traditional Igbo society is that there, was, there were kind of checks and balances that allowed women to, to maintain power, to exercise power, sometimes among themselves. They had associations, as you know, like Umwada, Alotaradi, and some other social institutions. But today I'm looking at three institutions or rituals that were domiciled in the home showing that women had influence not only outside the home, but also inside the home. They had leadership rules. Igbo women have always had leadership rules to play in the community. And also, Igbo women use their social organizations, like Omada or Alotradi, to exert power in patriarchy. If they were badly treated, they had ways of you know, getting back to the system. But I'm not discussing all that today. What I'm looking at are these three institutions. Imechi, uh, Omuoko, and Omugwo. I'm sure some of you may have heard of the Omugwo, or you know it. Some of you may have practiced it, or your mothers have come to do Omugwo for you. That one is still practiced today. What might interest you more will be the two that are now extinct, the Omuoko and Imechi. The Omoko, what happened was the mother had, it was a way she had to bring her daughters, whether they are married or they are still with her. It's a ceremony in my place, Oga, and in Byron's. What happened was during the Omoko um, day or the period she will have it, the, every mother will have it, normally have it, every, mother, every woman who is married and had children, if you have daughters, those who had daughters. You would do it, you invite your married daughters to your home during the Omwoko uh, period. They will come with their children if they had children. If it's one daughter or you, have, you had many daughters, all your daughters will come to your home at that time. And then the mother will cook. There's a, a, a ritual a food she prepares and this is uh, that's fufu, which we, my people call otara. It's made from cassava. And then she will make a sauce with uh, snails. And then during the ceremony, each of the daughters will bend down with her mouth. She will soak the, the, uh, the five lumps of, of uh, otara. She will mold them, and then she will dip them in the sauce and put them on a mortar. Uh, this wooden tray. And then each daughter will pick up five of them with her mouth, and then she will eat the snail. And then if she had more than one daughter, they would all do that. This was the ritual. Then after that, throughout the, the period, maybe a day or two, she would, the mother would draw her daughters close to her, and she would teach them, learn how they are coping in their, in their mother's two homes. If they had problems, they would discuss, she would discuss it with them. Some of, they would bear their mind to their mother. This is a very intimate period that mothers had once a year 
with their married daughters or daughters who are still who are still in the house with them. So this is the Omoku festival. And then of course her husband and if she had sons, they were all there, but this is an intimate ceremony between the mother and her daughters. It has nothing to do with the men. But of course, they are there and she will normally cook for her husband and her sons, but this is a special period she had with her daughters. Then that's the Omoku. Then the Imechi is a woman worshiping her personal God. You know, in the home is the man who has the offer, the, the family, ancestral, or anosy. The man makes sacrifices to that, and uh, he's the head of the family. But once a year, the Imechi is for the woman. She would, again, celebrate or worship her God or her personal chi. That's why it's called Imechi. And she, she has, a, by the corner of the compound, there is a, a shrine with an ogilisi, or oduala plant. And she will go there and kill a cock or hen, and then she will cook it and, uh, and prepare food for her family. And this is a special worship she has to celebrate her God. That day is her day. And she will cook for her husband and her children, and they will eat. That's the imechi. And she does it once a year. It's a, a, a time of worship and sacrifice to her God. And then, of course, the omugwa, as some of you might know, is a ceremony where a mother, uh, when a daughter gives birth to a child, her mother will come to her home and stay, depending on the agreement. She could stay one month, two months, three months, some stay even up to six months if uh, the mother is, has time, like she's not working. And she, during that period, she will take care of her daughter who has given birth to a child. Sometimes the daughter could have given birth through cesarean section, so she's very weak and she needs her mother very much at that time. And of course, this helps daughters or young women not to be depressed. When your mother is there taking care of you and the new baby, that is why many Igbo women do not get depressed when they have children. Sometimes when you read gynecological books about the West, they talk about some women being depressed after having babies, that kind of. But hardly any Igbo woman, because the mother, if the mother cannot come, sometimes her mother, sister, her aunt, or even a senior sister, a much elder sister will come. But that period of Omugwa is so crucial. I know my mother did it for me when I had my, each time I had my children, four times. One of my sisters had, had uh, six children, and she would go, each of us. My mother was a businesswoman, but she would, pre, she would organize herself during that Omugwa. She, she could stay a month or two. So it's very crucial. And many people still practice Omugwa today. The Imechi and the Omoko, they are extinct. They died with the coming of Christianity because they identified them as having ritual, anose, and hidden, and pagan. So it, it, it died in my community. But the Omugwa has continued. Now, I see this, these institutions as giving a woman power to influence her home, her children. During the time a woman is with her children or her daughters, observing this ceremony, it, 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 it seals the affection. And as is a, the, it was continuous because the daughter would also do it in her own uh, uh, marital home for her own children. So it was a way that mothers had to advise their daughters, find out if they're having problems in their homes, teach them if, they did, if, if there were problems that had arisen between them and their husbands, the mother would advise them. In fact, in one of my novels, there's a woman there who advised her daughter in a similar ceremony uh, during the Omoku period. The daughter had come with very painful marital problem. You know, she experienced she was having, and then the mother advised, gave us very sound advice, which she, she took the advice and it helped her in her life. So th these are ways, you know, a woman who has gone through these institutions was demonstrating some measure of leadership, taking care of her home, organizing her home, or while she's doing the omugwa in her son's-in-law's home and her daughter's home, she also comes close to her son-in-law because at that time she's actually taking care of the whole family. She's taking care of her daughter and the baby, and 
Of course, naturally, she would also cook for the family, for the husband and everybody. It's a very happy time. And whenever she, she, she comes for the omugwa, she will bring uh, spices, you know, those special spices you used to prepare food for nursing mothers. You know, some of us don't know this, but those spices are medicinal. They help in getting the wound back to normal, and then the daughter is not nourished. But she's bringing smoked fish and so many things. Ogiri and all those, Oba, all those things we eat, uh, we eat in, in, in our culture. She will bring them when she, she, she's coming for the omugo, and she will use them to prepare food for her daughter and, and her daughter's family. And when she's going away, say after a month or two or three, it depends on the agreement. My, my mother used to stay up to two or three months with me each time she came. Then the son-in-law will buy things for her, clothes, and also maybe a bag of salt because she's going to give the salt to the other wives in the kindred to show that she had just come away from her daughter's home. So she will go home, go back home with all kinds of gifts. She will go back home with all kinds of gifts. Sometimes the son-in-law would also give her a gift for her husband, that is his uh, father-in-law. So it's a very happy time for mothers, and it's also a time to, to, to resurrect the affection that might have uh, waned over, over, the, over, the, over time, because she's closer again to her, her daughter and her, and her children and her, her son-in-law. And if I can judge from my own home, my husband was always very happy each time my mother came because my mother would come with her vibrant nature and then she would bring laughter and, you know, and, and then each time I had a baby, I used to feel a bit depressed, you know, unhappy. I don't know why, I, some kind of blue, but my mother, as soon as my mother came, sometimes there was even a time she came before the baby arrived. And so when I was having the baby, I knew she was there for me. So I think it's a very beautiful ceremony, and we would encourage even modern-day mothers to continue to do it for their. I remember when, the last, when my daughter had her first son, her first child, I couldn't go. She lives in Lagos like me, but I couldn't go to her home in Lagos to do this for her because I, I didn't have leave from work. I was still teaching in my university. So what I did was to ask her husband, to please bring her to my home. So she came with the new baby straight from the hospital. And I was able to do the omugo for her in my home. So even though this is kind of different from the normal omugo, but I did it for her in the morning. I wake up early, bed the baby, get her ready, give her, prepare something for her to eat before I went to work. So this omugo, even though omuoko and imechi died with Christianity, I think we should keep the omugo alive. If there's any mother here who hasn't done it for her daughter, please try to do so. It's a period of great intimacy and joy for the mother. Thank you, and the child. Thank you very much.